Since the dawn of the dial-up connection, we've been told not to believe everything we read on the internet. You'd be surprised to learn there are plenty of incredible facts that might sound like they were made to fool you, but are actually true. And coming up are some real corkers. Humpty Dumpty is not an egg. Most people know the nursery rhyme. An oversized egg in human clothing topples off a wall and smashes to bits. All the king's horses and all the king's men rush to try and piece his broken shell back together, but to no avail. The end, right? Except nowhere in the rhyme is Humpty Dumpty named as an anthropomorphized breakfast food. So where in the fever dream heck did that come from? It's all thanks to the king of opioid-induced fantasies himself, Mr. Lewis Carroll. You see, Carroll decided to incorporate the character into his 1872 novel, Through the Looking Glass, where he inexplicably represents Humpty Dumpty as a giant human-egg hybrid. But if he wasn't originally an egg, then what was he? According to war historians, Humpty was actually a massive cannon used in the English Civil War during the 1648 Siege of Colchester. One of the attacking cannons managed to destroy the wall Humpty Dumpty was positioned upon, causing the cannon to be destroyed. It's no wonder the king's horses couldn't put it back together again though. They don't even have hands. Sharks are older than trees. If you had any doubt about how ridiculously badass sharks are, get this. They literally predate trees. The earliest species we can even classify as a tree, the now extinct Archaeopteris, lived around 350 million years ago where the Sahara Desert is now. That might seem like an impossibly long time, but our sharp toothed buddies have been kicking about Earth for 50 million years longer. That's right, the earliest shark teeth ever found date back some 400 million years ago and probably belong to an ancient shark known as Leonotus, which lived in Europe. In their monumental lifetime, sharks have skirted four global mass extinctions and outlived many creatures humans never lived to see for ourselves. The sad truth is that sharks don't reproduce fast enough to keep up with humans' particular penchant for hunting and killing them for their fins. If we're not careful, trees might end up beating them after all. Carrots used to be purple. Picture this, bunnies nibbling on purple carrots, school meals served up with violet-hued veggies, and parents desperately trying to convince kids that something without a luminous orange coloring could help them see in the dark. It would be bedlam. Prior to the 17th century, there was no alternative to this strange reality. You see, the wild carrots which originated in Persia had a deep purple coloring thanks to an antioxidant pigment known as anthocyanin and were thinner and more bitter than today's varieties. As these made their way to Europe, they were selectively bred to improve their flavor and appearance and yellow or white carrots became more commonplace. Eventually, Dutch growers took mutant strains of the purple carrot and crossed them with these new varieties to develop the sweet, plump, modern-day orange carrot. Some believe this was also done in a tribute to William of Orange, who led the Netherlands to independence. It's the thought that counts, I guess. Betty White is older than sliced bread. Few people can boldly claim that they are literally older than sliced bread. Beloved 98-year-old actress Betty White, who was born in 1922, is one of the lucky individuals bestowed with such a title. You see, the actual concept of sliced bread didn't even come about until 1928, when it was introduced by inventor Otto Frederick Rowater. In case maths isn't your strong suit, that literally means that Betty White was six years old before she had any concept of sliced bread, let alone toast. Before 1928, bakers didn't trust that sliced bread could stay fresh, so it was sold in whole loaves as a DIY food. A report in the July 1928 edition of the Chillicothe Constitution Tribune, after Otto's invention debuted, noted that some people might even find sliced bread startling while most housewives would be thrilled to be relieved of the pressure of hand slicing. Ah, uh, simpler times. Nightingales sing louder than chainsaws. If you've ever been rudely awoken by the morning chorus of birds outside your window, it might feel like someone has just started up a chainsaw in your bedroom. It turns out there's a good reason to resent your winged neighbors, especially if they happen to be nightingales. German researcher Henrik Brum, whose last name ironically sounds kind of like a chainsaw, looked into just how noisy nightingales can be in 2001 and 2002 and concluded that they are illegally loud. When male nightingales sing to attract a mate, they compete with background urban noise like traffic or construction and can raise their volume by up to 14 decibels. 
Brahm recorded Nightingale songs during mating season and the loudest measured a whopping 95 decibels, which is about as loud as a chainsaw from a meter away. For some perspective, European sound pollution regulations forbids exposing workers to more than 87 decibels without ear protection. Basically, Nightingales could be locked up if they were humans purely because of how loud they are. Cleopatra lived closer to the iPhone than the building of the pyramids. If I asked you whether Cleopatra was more likely to be present at the building of the Great Pyramids of Giza or lining up for the release of the first iPhone, what would you say? Believe it or not, Cleo came closer to taking her first selfie than overseeing the construction of the landmarks she is so closely associated with. The largest Great Pyramid of Giza was likely constructed between 2580 BC and 2560 BC during the first phase of the Egyptian Empire. But Cleopatra wasn't born until 69 BC, around 2,500 years later. Cleo was the last active pharaoh of Egypt and famously used a venomous snake to commit suicide at the age of 39 and 30 BC, meaning she lived closer to modern day than Egypt's founding period. Meanwhile, Apple co-founder and then CEO Steve Jobs debuted the first generation iPhone in 2007, only 2,037 years after Cleopatra's death. France was still executing people by guillotine when Star Wars came out. If that last fact wasn't enough to prove how warped your perception of time is, this'll do it. On September 10th, 1977, Hamida Jandubi smoked a few cigarettes before stepping up to be executed by France's most infamous punishment, the guillotine. This was the ultimate price to pay for John Doobie's crime of taking his lover's life and was to be the last execution by this method in the country's history. It wasn't the only historic occasion to occur that month in 1977 though, because the very next day across the country at the Dovila Film Festival, a little movie by the name of Star Wars made its debut. Turns out the guillotine wasn't always so associated with powdered wigs and revolution. In another macabre connection, a 17-year-old boy named Christopher Lee who attended France's final public execution in 1939 went on to play Count Dooku in the Star Wars series. Goats have accents. Most of us have wondered what it would be like to communicate with animals. A Dr. Doolittle reality might still be a way off, but we're one step closer to understanding the humble goat thanks to a groundbreaking discovery. They have accents. Yes, those adorable little bleats are actually spoken in distinctly different dialects. According to a team of researchers from London's Queen Mary University, it's not uncommon for humans to pick up new accents after changing social groups or moving away from home. So why shouldn't goats do the same? According to Dr. Elodie Briefer, that's exactly what happens. The team studied a group of pygmy goats in 2012 at one week old and five weeks old and found that they adapted their ways of communicating as they grew older and moved in different groups, making them one of the only other mammals to do so. I guess this means those goats yelling like humans might actually be saying, you don't sound like you're from around here, buddy. Armadillos always give birth to identical quadruplets. As if suddenly rolling your body into a compact armored ball isn't enough to make you memorable, nine banded armadillos have another weird party trick, giving birth to identical quadruplets. It would be a mean feat once in a lifetime, but female armadillos can expect nothing less every single time they fall pregnant. No wonder they need to escape reality every once in a while. A female produces a single egg which, once fertilized, splits into four genetically identical embryos that each share one placenta. Scientists aren't sure exactly why this happens, but it could be an evolutionary attempt to produce identical clones in the knowledge that one offspring might not always survive in an ever-changing environment. Brings a whole new layer of meaning to the term sibling rivalry, right? It rains diamonds on Jupiter and Saturn. Earth can experience some freak weather, but possible inhabitants of Jupiter and Saturn could be well accustomed to a meteorological event Kim Kardashian would dream of, diamond rain. Believe it or not, US scientists have determined that a phenomenon occurring on these planets is capable of producing a rock big enough for a hefty engagement ring out of thin air. It all starts in the upper atmosphere where lightning created during intense thunderstorms turns methane into carbon or soot, which then plummets down towards the planet's core. As the soot falls about 6,000 kilometers, immense atmospheric pressure is enough to turn it into graphite and eventually compress diamonds, like popcorn, but in reverse. Unfortunately for anyone expecting Elon Musk to create an intergalactic diamond shuttle anytime soon, it turns out these one centimeter diamonds don't last long. 
The stones fall for approximately two and a half Earth spans, by which point they likely melt into a sea of carbon, which is far less appealing. You're taller in the morning. Ever been rejected because she only dates guys who are six foot and over? Try suggesting breakfast for your next date and you might just get the boost you need. Believe it or not, you wake up taller each morning than you were when you went to bed the night before. And it's all down to our good friend gravity. When you sleep, your spine is able to gain some much needed respite from the pressure of gravity and your body replenishes lost fluids between intervertebral discs which stretch and relax. When you first awake, this excess fluid is enough to provide up to half an inch more height. So don't feel bad about rounding up on your Tinder profile. That also means we're basically being gradually compressed throughout our day, which is a pleasant thought. For the same reason, astronauts can experience an instant two inch growth spurt. Another reason to put space travel on your bucket list. Strawberries aren't berries, but bananas are. Let's imagine you've been kidnapped and the kidnapper places a fruit bowl in front of you. He asks you to pick out all the berries for your freedom. So naturally, you reach for the strawberries and raspberries. Guess what? You've just sealed your fate, bucko. That's right, pretty much every fruit us humans added the berry suffix to isn't actually a berry, because the English language is a da Vinci code of utter nonsense. According to Bonafide Botanist, a berry is defined as a fleshy fruit with interior seeds which stems from one flower with one ovary. Strawberries and raspberries don't grow this way and have seeds on the outside, making them aggregate fruits instead. Meanwhile, bananas, whose seeds are so small they're easy to forget, are born of a single ovaried flower, making them a berry. If that wasn't wild enough, consider this. The humble avocado turned millennial cult symbol? Also a berry. You can make diamonds from peanut butter. Forget forking out big time at the jewelers or mining deep into the earth for a heist worthy diamond. Just reach for the GIF instead. If you're a scientist, that is. Dan Frost from the Bearicious Geo Institute in Germany discovered the snack's bizarre diamond producing qualities in 2013 while trying to replicate the crystalline structures believed to exist in the Earth's lower mantle. Thousands of kilometers below the Earth's surface, there's a geological process which extracts oxygen from CO2, leaving behind carbon that can then be crystallized into diamonds under immense pressure. Frost needed to use a carbon rich material to try and replicate this process and that's where good old peanut butter comes in. Using a powerful piston under special lab conditions, Frost subjected the PB to pressures equal to 1.3 million times that of atmospheric pressure. Eventually, this was enough to produce a tiny diamond about three millimeters in diameter, which is smaller than a round cut quarter carat stone. Size isn't the only drawback because the agonizing process can take weeks at a time. Oh, and it also releases hydrogen, which causes small diamond destroying explosions. I'd hold on to the engagement ring piggy bank for now. Are you clued up enough to know of any more facts that might sound fake but are actually true? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.